Prince with the latest. Brad? About them, but unfortunately, you won't be able to see their faces. Uh, I also want to thank the clerk's office for allowing us to use their space. Uh, and, uh, and I'm told this is the first time that the marshal service has held a press conference in this, in this space, so uh, I think this is certainly fitting and proper that we do this. So we're going to give you a few updates uh, in this investigation. So as you know, the, the U.S. Marshal Service is the uh, federal government's primary agency for fugitive investigations. Uh, I think we are the best of the best. We get results, and today's announcement demonstrates that. Um, when the Two Rivers Violent Fugitive Task Force Somebody's recorder here. Yeah, is it still recording? It is. Okay. When the when the Two Rivers Violent Fugitive Task Force was asked to participate uh, in this uh, fugitive investigation, uh, we we since that time we've logged hundreds and hundreds of hours into trying to apprehend uh, Justin Johnson, even before the reward announcement. And once the a reward announcement was made, we received over 500 tips. And uh, we went through that process of uh, vetting those tips and reaching out to our partners uh, across the southeast to help us uh, check addresses. And I'll just tell you a few of the places that we checked. We went to uh, Indianapolis, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, and Hampton, Virginia, uh, checking different addresses and following up on tips. We were very diligent in what we did. And yesterday, with the uh, assistance of the, our headquarters investigative operations division, uh, headquartered at Marshall's headquarters in Arlington, Virginia, uh, we got a tip that Justin Johnson was traveling on Highway 42 in Indiana. So we contacted the Great Lakes U.S. Marshals Great Lakes Regional Fugitive Task Force and asked for their assistance. And so through a coordinated effort, they were, they were able to stop a vehicle as it pulled into uh, a truck stop in Brazil, Indiana, just outside of Terre Haute. And Justin Johnson was safely taken into custody. And I just want to also give credit to the Indiana State Police the Putnam County Sheriff's Office, and the Terre Haute, Indiana Police Department for their assistance. And once he was taken into custody, we also identified a second person that was in the vehicle with him. This man that goes by the name of Shondell, I'll spell his name, S-H-O-N-D-A-L-E, Barnett. B-A-R-N-E-T-T, -T. Shondell Barnett, date of birth is February 6, 1994. He's originally from Memphis, but lives in Dallas. Shondell Barnett is a person who we believe was providing assistance to Justin since we've been looking for him. And he now faces charges of accessory after the fact to first degree murder. He's being housed at the Clay County, Indiana jail, and he will face, and there was a state warrant that the marshals filed on him. And so he will face the, uh, go through the extradition process of being extradited back here to Shelby County. Now, uh, Justin Johnson, on the other hand, he was transported to the Knox County, Indiana jail. And he was booked on a violation of federal supervised release. He went before a federal magistrate in the Southern District of Indiana this morning at 1130 he waived his identity hearing and he waived his bond hearing. So in essence, he has agreed to come back to face the federal supervised release charges in the Western District of Tennessee. And he will go before a judge in this building, go before a federal magistrate and have an initial appearance on that charge. Um, I can't give you a timeline for, for safety purposes, but just know that uh, when, when he's ready to be transported, the marshals will be bringing him back here to this building to, to face those charges. Um, I want to thank uh, 
Chief Davis for the confidence that she has in, in our office. Whenever they, uh, their, their investigators, they do a tremendous job. MPD is just, you know, you won't find a better, better agency when it comes to investigating crime. Uh, but when they get a warrant, uh, I just appreciate the confidence they have in us. They'll, they'll, they'll call the marshals because they know that they're going to get results. I also want to thank uh, our partner agencies on our task force. Uh, Chief Davis provides task force officers on our task force as well as Shelby County Sheriff Floyd Bonner, Fayette County Sheriff Bobby Rouse, and the Tennessee Department of Correction. Uh, we have a great working relationship and a great partnership, and I just want you all to know that we do what we can to keep this community safe and to apprehend violent fugitives on the run. Um, I also want to thank uh, General Wyrick. Uh, she's committed to prosecuting violent offenders in our community, and that's, that's refreshing. Um, when, whenever we call, we need something from General Wyrick, she, she's always there, just a phone call away, and uh, I just appreciate her. I um, also want to thank, as I said before, there's some, there's some uh, guys on our task force that they have, they have ate, slept, and drank Justin Johnson ever since this happened. I mean, I, I have to tell you, um, you know, those guys took, a little, took it a little bit personal, um, and you definitely could see that. I mean, they were, they fielded calls all night long. They would come in, no sleep, eyes red, uh, you know, red from lack of sleep, not, not red from anything else. <laughs> and uh, I just thought I would clarify that. Um, just want to tell you that, you know, you won't find a more committed uh, group of guys, and and this it's that way throughout the marshal service. We we pride ourselves on our work. Um, you know, that that star been shining bright since 1789, and it, and it's shining it's shining bright today. Um, you know, we we do what we do, and we do it for the safety of our community. Um, I'm going to step away, and next you'll hear from from Chief Davis. And I think at the conclusion, uh, we'll, we'll answer what we're able to. Thank you. Chief. Good afternoon. So what I'll do is provide just a bit of a summary of the MPD's uh, work towards this particular case and the apprehension of these two wanted individuals. So on Wednesday, November 17, 2021, at approximately 12.24 p.m., Memphis police officers responded to a shooting at 2370 Airways Boulevard, Makiba's Homemade Cookies. Upon arrival, officers located 36-year-old Adolf Thornton Jr., known as Young Dolph, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Thornton was pronounced deceased on the scene by Memphis Fire Department personnel. After an exhaustive investigation by MPD staff, investigators, and supervisors, many who are in this room right now, 23-year-old Justin Johnson and 32-year-old Cornelius Smith were apprehended. Justin Johnson, who is a wanted person of interest in the murder of young Dolph, Adolf Thornton, is now in custody. Thanks to the Marshal Service and their dogged, relentless and unwavering commitment to getting this individual off the street. Cornelius Smith is now in custody as well, pending the following charges. First degree murder, criminal attempt to first degree murder, convicted felon in possession of a handgun, employing a firearm during the commission of a dangerous felony, and theft of property in the amount of $10,000 to $60,000. These arrests would not have been possible without the dedicated men and women of the Memphis Police Department and our, and, and our partners, specifically our homicide unit. Last year, these investigators handled more than 300 homicide cases. They work day in and day out trying to identify individuals with the same type of aggression and unwavering intrepid spirit that was involved in this particular case. And without the assistance of our partners and 
This is a short list of individuals or groups that we need to identify. Of course, the United States Marshals, Marshal Tyrese Miller and his team, the Two Rivers Violent Fugitive Task Force, the Multi-Agency Gang Unit, MGU, Shelby County Sheriff's Department, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, the Covington Police Department, the South Haven Police Department, the DeSoto County Sheriff's Department, the Indiana State Police, and the Putnam County Sheriff's Department. The Memphis Police Department would also like to thank all the men and women who were involved in this investigation for their dedication and hard work. We also would like to thank the hundreds of citizens, not just from our area, but from around the country who provided tips throughout this investigation to ensure these individuals were brought to justice. Thank you to our citizens and to the public for trusting the Memphis Police Department and utilizing our Crime Stoppers Anonymous tip line. This is an ongoing investigation. Thank you very much. And at this particular time, I'd like to ask our District Attorney General, Amy Wyrick, for remarks. Good afternoon. As you have heard, the list of people and the energy involved and the work dedicated to apprehending these two individuals has been limitless. Uh, this case will be handled in the district attorney's office by three of our ADAs, Paul Hagerman, Austin Schofield, and Joey Griffith, who are assigned to our Crime Strategies and Narcotics Prosecution Unit. Because of the criminal histories involved in uh, the individuals charged, the case will be assigned to our Special Prosecution Unit Division 7, which handles, as you all know, repeat violent felony offenders. Um, you, you've heard us thank, and it has to be said again, the hard work of the men and women standing behind me and the agencies that they represent and the sleepless nights and the countless hours that they have dedicated to this case that we're here talking about, but all of the others that they are working on and doing the same uh, in, in terms of bringing someone to justice so that victims of these crimes can have closure and so that we as a community can have that closure as well. I wanted to take just a minute and um, clarify a few things regarding the criminal history of Justin Johnson. So you've heard that Cornelia Smith was indicted by the Shelby County Grand Jury yesterday. You've heard the charges that he was indicted on. As for Justin Johnson, in July of 2015, at the age of 17, he was charged with aggravated rape and aggravated robbery at the gunpoint. The victim in that case was a woman at an Econo Lodge. He was found delinquent. He was placed in the custody of the Department of Children's Services until his 19th birthday. Our office filed a transfer request in that case that was denied, and he was placed on the Violent Juvenile Sex Offender Registry. In January of 2017, January 31st to be specific, he shot three people at the Billy Hardwick Bowling Alley, and many of you all have covered that case. In February of 2017, he was arrested on that case after MPD solved it. In May of 2017, he pled guilty to five years concurrent for the shooting in the Billy Hardwick case. In November of 2017, he asked a criminal court judge to be released from that sentence, and the judge granted that request. That was nine months of time on a five-year sentence. In May of 2018, he was arrested with a handgun and illegal drugs. The next day, he posted a $7,500 bond. A week later, he was arrested for violating the conditions of his probation on, with the new gun and the new drug case. Three days later, he posted a $15,000 bond on that violation of probation. He was indicted by the federal government in July of 2018 as part of a weekly and quite literally daily communication between our office and the U.S. Attorney's Office on all gun cases. You guys have covered stories and over the years of Project Safe Neighborhoods, and this indictment in this case was the work of that joint effort of federal, state, and local law enforcement coming together literally every week to review every gun arrest. And this case was indicted by the feds, as I mentioned, in July of 2018. 
His state bond was revoked in February of 2019. That same month, the state judge ordered that his sentence in the state court be run consecutive to any sentence that he may receive in the federal system. And in May of 2021, he had done his time in the federal system and was released from the Federal Bureau of Prisons. As for Cornelius Smith, he has a prior uh, from 2011, a criminal attempt to aggravated robbery and an aggravated assault for which he received a three-year sentence. So I hope that helps clarify. Our office has fielded a lot of questions and perhaps others of you in the room have as well about why Justin Johnson was out of custody. I hope this tells you why. And the short answer is because of the laws, because of the laws of the state of Tennessee uh, and because of the criminal justice system that we operate in every day. Um, again, he did nine months on a five-year sentence. He was entitled to ask the judge to be released, uh, and that request was granted, and he was on probation for those state charges, and that's when he picked up the federal cases as well. So with that, I think we will open it up to questions. I'll turn it back over to Marshall Miller, but again, just want to say thank you to everybody in this room that has worked so hard on this, everybody that is not here. Um, and I think it shows that this is a joint effort, federal, state, and local, for the pursuit of justice for anyone who wants to commit violent crime and wreak havoc on the streets of Shelby County. Marshall Miller, is there any evidence you can elaborate or disclose to the public that ties Mr. Johnson to the Young Dolph killing? Um, we handled the fugitive investigation only. Uh, the, the investigative agency into the shooting of, of Young Dolph is, was handled by the Memphis Police Department, so any questions about their investigation will be, have to be addressed, addressed with them. Chief, Chief, Davis, I've got Chief, a question for you. Chief, can you answer that question? Chief, can you answer that question? I can try. Well, at, at this particular time, we can't get into the details just yet because we're still pending indictments. And the specifics, we had enough probable cause to actually put out this wanted um, uh, flyer for um, Justin Johnson. And we have enough information to um, ensure that he will see his day in court. But right now we can't provide the specifics about it because it's still pending that indictment. Do you have a theory on motive? Not just yet. There, there has been um, just a wealth of tips and information and leads and putting this case together. And our officers and investigators have been working since this particular um, case began. Lots of rumors and innuendo, but we're really trying to sift through to the truth and what the real motives are. We're just not ready to put that out there right now. To your knowledge, are these two suspects, the two people caught in the video outside of McCain? Um, we can't say 100%, but we have enough information to have pushed this particular case to the point that it is now and pursue uh, this in a court of law. There was enough evidence, enough material evidence, enough uh, support and witnesses to be able to get this case to this point without me jeopardizing an indictment and, and information that will uh, come out in the grand jury. That's about all I can say. Um, I, and because of the fact that I'm not the investigator, and I, I don't want to put them in a position where they're revealing too much as well. Understand yeah. it, are there going to be any more arrests? I understand that these two people are, are, are here right it now. It is right? very possible. It is very possible. Once we, you know, conduct, continue to conduct this investigation, there's no telling where it could potentially lead. There could be other individuals that are implicated in this particular homicide. Are you all Yes. We are all working together. That's why I outline all of those different uh, agencies, because at some point in time in this investigation, our investigators have had touch points with various other individuals, other um, law enforcement personnel around the country. So absolutely. Thank you. Um, it's been fast moving from the very beginning. It's just that when we have investigations um, that are as um, high profile as this, the 
police department is very careful about how much information we provide, you know, to the general public so that we don't compromise the investigation. But from day one, there were um, leads and these investigators have been on the trail of uh, individuals that we assume were involved in this. And of course, that information um, was, was more robust in the last months. Uh, not that I know of. I don't think I can answer that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. Do you know yeah. why they were in Indiana? Um, I don't know that just yet. Do we know why? Um, they've been all over the place. And um, I, I would assume that they were fleeing justice, you know. Um, well, it, it, as I stated earlier, there were several cities that, we, that had been searched, uh, from Atlanta to Indianapolis, Houston, Dallas. So uh, Justin Johnson has been uh, very active uh, since he's been on the run, and even more so after the reward announcement. So he never really stayed in one place very long. Marshall Miller, Chief, I know this is a really high-profile case, a lot of uh, interest in the community. Have you spoken with uh, the family of Mr. Uh, and any kind of reaction from family or loved ones after this, the, uh, the break in this case? Um, I can say that our staff has been very sensitive to the family to ensure that the family is aware of various iterations in this particular case. Um, as far as reactions, I'd be uncomfortable to say what their reactions are. I would think that they're probably relieved um, at this point, though. And, and yeah. I, I know every homicide investigation is important, but knowing yes. how, how, how high-profile this one, what does this mean for you all? Uh, I know this has so much community interest in general. What does yes. this mean? Well, it, it really speaks to the work that these guys and gals do every day, and they really do. When we have the participation of other agencies and partnerships that we've been talking about, and we also have that very critical input from the community, and as it was said, we vetted hundreds and hundreds of leads. When we get that information, we can bring cases to closure much faster. There was an awful lot of information coming into the Memphis Police Department, and we appreciate the public's trust in us to keep their information confidential so that we can bring those individuals to justice. So not just with this case, we're hoping that we continue to see that level of engagement in providing information when we have these types of cases, especially um, cases of violent crime. Reading the affidavit, Well, I think the case itself, there were just various iterations, various pieces of the puzzle that, you know, came in at different times that strengthened the case even more. So um, it wasn't an all at once, this is our guy. It was the combination of layers of information that helped to solidify that case, that, they, that person was involved. Yes. You know, at this point, I don't think so. We don't have any information, and my staff is here, but I, I think I would have been made aware of uh, any case that we thought was connected to this particular tragedy. So um, at this point, we don't think that there was any other individuals that um, were affected, you know, negatively like that. Uh, any person that might be associated with a specific crime is a person of interest. I'm not sure uh, at what point or what level um, uh, Mr. Owens is involved in this. This, it's, We're still investigating, and as we mentioned before, this may have a rippling effect. There may be more involvement and more charges um, in the days to come as it relates to this. Right. We're going to take one more question. Marshall. No, he was he was a driver. His passenger was Shondell Barnett, okay. and he's going to be facing charges 
of accessory after the fact, and and, and we'll my office will get you uh, a photo, get a photo out today of of, of Shondell Barnett. Uh, but he was taken into custody um, without incident. So uh, were they on another stolen car, or did you not? Um, the car was not stolen. It was not. It was not stolen. It was not stolen. Okay. Yes. Did it belong to them, or uh, where did they get this car? Well, I, I can't. That's that's that could be part of Memphis's ongoing investigation about the car, and so I don't want to get too much. I don't want to provide too many details about that. Um, Do we know how long it will be before Justice Johnson is back here? Well, um, he'll be back here promptly. Uh, I don't want to give a definitive time because, again, th that could be a safety, safety concern for the marshals who have to bring him back here. Uh, as I understand, there's a lot of interest in it, and, uh, you know, we just want to get him back safely uh, so he can, he can, you know, the wheels of justice can turn. Thank you. All right, and again, that was a press conference providing new details on the murder of young Dolph. Right now, this is what we know. A lot of details to break down here for you. Two suspects were arrested and identified. Another suspect, Shendell Burnett, also charged for aiding and, abet and abetting Burnett with uh, who was one of the drivers. Now, what we've been told by the U.S. Marshal is that they spent countless of hours, hundreds of hours, searching for Justin Johnson and after receiving more than 500 tips from witnesses and people with evidence, people who said they've spotted him. Uh, they said they, he's been spotted in Indianapolis. Uh, they checked Indianapolis. They checked Dallas. They checked Houston. They even checked Hampton, Virginia, and then later got a tip that Justin Johnson was traveling on a highway in Brazil, in, in Indiana. Indiana, and they stopped that vehicle at a truck stop in Brazil, Indiana. And when they uh, stopped Justin Johnson, he was taken into custody. We also learned, as mentioned, that there was a, a second person in the vehicle with Justin Johnson who was also taken into custody. That person, again, was Shen Shondale Burnett. Uh, he will be facing charges of accessory after the fact. Now, we do have our reporter Brad Broder standing by who was just at that press conference with more details. Hey, Brad. Yeah, Brady, a lot of new details coming out just a couple of minutes ago here at this press conference between the U.S. Marshal's Office, D.A. Amy Wyrick of Shelby County, as well as Memphis Police Chief C.J. Davis. He just gave a rundown of a lot of the highlights. Uh, the Marshal's Office really wanted to reiterate the hundreds of tips which came in in recent days and recent weeks looking for the accused killer, one of the accused killers of young Dolph, Justin Johnson. Marshal Miller just spoke about the leads of him potentially being in Dallas, Houston, Indianapolis, as well as Virginia. They said marshals were working tips throughout the country trying to locate Justin Johnson before he was arrested without incident yesterday near Terre Haute, Indiana. Cornelius Smith also in custody at 201 Poplar awaiting charges. Justin Johnson, we've learned, will be extradited at some point promptly. We don't know exactly when, but after this morning in the Southern District of Indiana, he agreed to waive extradition and will be transferred to Shelby County soon to face uh, those charges in connection to the shooting death of young Dolph November 17th at Makita's Homemade Cookies near Memphis International Airport. I also spoke with uh, Chief Davis. She said uh, they have been in contact with family of young Dolph consistently uh, throughout the investigation. Didn't want to give the specifics of what their exact reaction was, but she did promise that there has been a lot of communication with the family, keeping them afloat of all the latest developments in this case. Brittany. Well, thank you, Brad. We know you've been following this story very closely since November when young Dolph was murdered. And we'll have more on the case and the latest information online and at the news or here on our news at 5 p.m. this evening. Now sending you back to General Hospital.